welcome to In This Corner. I'm James Smith. Throughout boxing's tremendous history, it's really been the big boys that have captured the glamour, prestige, and fame. The big boys, the heavyweights, primarily because of one thing, knockouts produced by tremendous power. You know, there's an old adage in boxing that goes, any heavyweight can knock out any heavyweight on any given day. And that's not always the case. But with our guest today, no heavyweight would ever be safe. He's the guy that may be the hardest puncher in the history of boxing. Ernie Shavers was a big part of one of the greatest eras in heavyweight boxing history, the 70s. There was Ali, Frazier, Foreman, Ellis, Quarry, Lyle, Norton, and Holmes. And with the exception of Frazier and Foreman, Shavers faced them all, beat many, and without question, delivered punishment with his punching prowess that has become part of heavyweight boxing lore. It's the life and career of Ernie Shavers coming up on In This Corner. In This Corner is brought to you by the Las Vegas Dental Group. Have an emergency? Need any dental work when you're in Las Vegas? Visit my friends at the Las Vegas Dental Group. Go to lasvegasdentalgroup.com for more information. I want people to call me champ. I want everyone to respect me. I want to go down in history as the greatest ever. So I'll perfect my technique. I'll throw harder than anyone I face. Every day I'll make my hands faster. I'll increase my endurance. I'll get all of this by being the first to the gym and the last to leave. I'll work endlessly to make sure what I want today is mine tomorrow. Because I'm gearing up for greatness. In this corner welcomes one of the ferocious punchers in the history of a boxing, Ernie Shavers. Ernie, welcome. Hey, Ernie, how you doing? And you still have that grip. <laughs> who, who did you pattern your, your style after when, when you became a pro? Well, I, it's, it's hard to say. I had so many guys I looked up to, uh, like Rock Marciano, Joe Lewis, and Ali, and all those guys I looked up to. But I was a puncher from day one, so I say most of that Joe Lewis type of guy, because he was a good puncher too. We both from the South. It's amazing, so many great fighters have come from, actually born in the Deep South. I only was in Alabama until I was five, they moved to Ohio, so I remember very little about the South. While you were there in the short period of time, I've heard you talk about uh, really experiencing racism firsthand, or your family. Well, during the 50s, uh, and we moved up to Ohio. I uh, think with us then, I remember my father bought a mule off this white gentleman, and he fell behind in the payment, in the last payment. So he come to take the mule back. And my father pulled a gun on him, but it, who, my father should have known, you never pull a gun on a, a Klansman in the South in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to flee north to Ohio. And uh, he, he, he left the neck the well, same day. Tell us about your, your upbringing, your early years, and your family. Well, I grew up in a, uh, a farm community in Ohio. Mother, she was very strict on us. And um, we were very, very close. So I learned from her firsthand experience how to care of myself, how to talk and treat people. And it's been a great experience. I had a great life. Uh, I always try to treat, treat, treat people 
the way we want to be treated in return. It's amazing. That's such a simple lesson, but one that if we applied it, if everybody applied it, we wouldn't have all the problems we do today. Just treat people like you want to be treated. I've always treated people well. Uh, I have a big heart and give. I was the giver uh, more than receiver. So life been good me. My whole entire life been a great life. I have no complaints about my life. If I live it over again, I wouldn't change one thing in it. Maybe become a champ of the world, but other than that, no. What, what is your first experience with boxing? Well, because you were a late starter. I started late. I was 22 years old. I first started boxing. I was January 3rd, 1967 in Youngstown, Ohio. Um, the first day I walked in the gym, they put the gloves on me. See, because I was always a big guy. So I, I, I carry myself quite well. Every now and then I get a, a punch in, and I go across the ring. He said, told me this guy gonna hurt somebody. So I went home and talked to my wife for a week, begged her for a week, came back on January the 10th, and started boxing. And I, my first fight was the first round knockout. So he said, keep doing that. So I kept doing it. <laughs> now you had a short, but successful amateur career, right? November 6, 1969, I fought amateur. I won the National AU. I won a couple of Ohio State titles and uh, uh, won a couple of uh, Youngstown State titles, I mean Youngstown area. Then I turned pro in November, I think the 6th or 7th of 69. A lot of people don't know this, and I know this guy because uh, I saw Bob Foster take him out. Vincente Rondon was the first guy that took you the distance, the former light heavyweight champion of the world. Remember that fight? I remember very well, yes, I did in Canton, Ohio. Ten rounds. Ten rounds, yes. So did it feel weird when it was round seven, round eight? You were used to lights out by that time. <laughs> well, you know, I knew he uh, was a good fighter, ex-champ, so I trained hard for him. Yeah, my trainer, Frank Luca, they had properly prepared me. So in case the fight did go to distance, because he was like the ex-champ, he knew a little few tricks of the trade. So I wanted to be ready just in case it went to distance, and I was ready. I'll, I'll name a few guys, and you can just uh, have a comment on him. Uh, a guy you faced before he was became as slick as he, as he ended up being, Jimmy Young. Oh, Jimmy Young was a very cunning fighter, um, but I, I punched you hard for him. See, Joe Frazier told me that how to beat J Jimmy. I go in there, uh, to Philadelphia, about a week before the fight, he said, Jimmy's afraid of right hand on He's petrified of it. He said, the first two rounds, he said, hit him lightly. Don't full, go full go, just send him up, send him up. Hit him about half power, bam. By the third round, this guy can't punch. Third round, I got cornered him, faked the right hand, left hook, and boom! Ball game was over. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that uh, was a, a hell of a heavyweight, maybe a guy that should have been a, a cruiserweight if they had that division, Jimmy Ellis, and the, that fight didn't last too long. Well, Jimmy was a, a good fighter, but um, he was too small to, to be fighting out like myself. I punched too hard for him. And uh, we kind of tricked Jimmy. He made him fight my style to fight his. He came to me trying to I, I show, show me he could punch. He gave me a couple good shots, but he paid for it later. Jerry Quarry. That one didn't go your way. What happened in that one? Well, I got stopped in the first round. We had a lot of management problems at the time with Don King and Dean Champs was feuding back and forth about who was going to be the manager or whatever. They both trying to get me to take sides going to the ring. I wasn't concentrating on the fight. Not, kind of, not uh, taking away from Jerry, but uh, that's, Jerry should have never beat me, but he did, but that's, that's where it goes. Ron Lyle, tell us about him. Ron Lyle was a tremendous puncher. I fought him in Denver. Uh, the first fight, I had him out the first round, but long count, Denver. He can make a stop in the sixth round. Great guy, good guy, a good hearted guy. Von Lau was very, we became very good friends over the years. Just for a week before he died, he called me a week before he died. He said, we had spoke together maybe once or twice a month, we'd call each other and talk on the phone. Where did that acorn come from? That came from Ali? He was a con man, probably the best. <laughs> but he was good at, at what he did, and uh, I love Ali, he's been good to me, 
and um, he opened the door for me, get my name worldwide, and we're still good friends today. In This Corner is brought to you by the Las Vegas Dental Group. Have an emergency? Need any dental work when you're in Las Vegas? Visit my friends at the Las Vegas Dental Group. Go to lasvegasdentalgroup.com for more information. September the 29th, 1977, in the Garden. You remember the guy you faced that night? Yes, Muhammad Ali. First off, how did that fight even get, get set up? I mean, we tried to fight Ali several times. He kept throwing opponents in there. He said, a guy like Roy Tiger William, who I sparred with him before, he, tough, tough guy. I got him in trouble. They gave him a stand eight count. They said, continue to fight, and he fell out. And that set up the, the, the fight with Ali? Yeah, no, no. Uh, nah. After I beat him, Ali said, okay, now I got one other guy I have to beat. I said, who's this guy? He, he wanted me to be, um, who is it now? Uh, Howard Smith. But I knew Howard. I had Howard for a sparring partner, knocked him out every day. So when I get to the gym, I see, uh, I get to weigh in, I see Howard. I was Howard. Jeff remember the old days, and he's telling him, I'm not ready for him. I'm not ready for him. I said, I got to beat. You, you got through all those hoops. And then you're facing, uh, facing Ali. Yes. The pre what about your personal preparation for that fight? Were you at all, in any way, shape, or form, overwhelmed? Uh, yes, I was overwhelmed because a fight guy like Ali, the whole world can have your eyes on you. If you did well and kept your name clean, you had made. And I did do well. I went to distance, and I kept my name clean. The fight game opened many, many doors for me all years thereafter, even now. So I think that Ali was the guy that gave me a worldwide attraction. All over the world, I got exposure to the world. During that fight, I'm sure there was a few moments that he would, you know, uh, like to forget about. Yeah. And, and one would be round number two, with just about a minute to go, you clipped him with a right hand that, then there was about six other, five or six other excellent right hands, and, a, and I think a right uppercut in there too. And he was in big trouble. Well, Ali, he, he was so cunning. You couldn't tell. He was faking that. Well, he was faking that. Well, they hurt. He was hurt, but he faked so well. So I didn't want to move in for the kill and get killed, so I, I didn't go in. I let him off the hook. And then later on in, in the fight, round 13, round 13, I think I had him in trouble again. Uh, but Ali was very cunning, very slick guy. That's why he's Ali, I guess. Let's talk about a, a guy you, you would face a couple times, and, and Larry Holmes. Uh, tell us about the first fight. Well, Larry had a left hand out of this world. I knew Larry, that, uh, I knew Larry, I had a high Larry. But Larry told me, Tony, you're in the hiring for a spine partner. I heard me 17, he said, I can never can beat you, because you would knock me out. But I learned all your tricks to trade, work with you all the years. And that's what uh, by, uh, Larry, he, he had figured me out, because he, he spied me every day. But he said, your right hand, you, you had me down to the right hand. If I hadn't knew your style, you would knock me out. That second fight with Holmes was the one where you put him down. I think it was round seven. Yes. And that, was, that would show a lot uh, about Larry Holmes. I mean, he got knocked down at other times, but getting knocked down by you with a, with a punch that... Did, when you landed that punch, you must have felt the reverberation all the way back to Alabama because it was a clean right hand. How the hell did he get up from that? Well, Larry said, Ernie, you hit me so too hard. You knocked me out. I hit the floor, the canvas, and woke me up. I said, Larry, I think you got up mad. <laughs> Larry was a great fighter. I know another guy that's your, your, your friend, but uh, you, you weren't too friendly to him when you met him, uh, Ken Norton. That one didn't go too long. What, what got me with Ken was he beat a, a young friend of mine. We grew up together, a guy named Randy Stevens. He should have never been in the same state with Ken. And then they made that match, and first round, Ken knocked him out. The very first round, he destroyed him. He was left hook, the guy's career was over. So I spoke to Randy, because he said we grew up together. I said, Randy, do you want me to uh, uh, take care of that? He said, yeah, I'd like you to take care of it. I said, okay, I'll call Larry. I said, Larry, I need a favor. He said, what's the favor, Shavers? I said, make Ken fight me before he fights you. He said, I don't want to fight Ken. too tough for me. I don't want to fight him again. I said, make him fight me, and you won't see him again. <laughs> so Larry said, he called Ken and said, Ken, you want me to turn a match? Yep. Got to be Shavers. The phone went dead. <laughs> He said, okay. 
and when Don King put the show together, I thought it was Archie Moore and all the years taught me we had to con people. So I looked at Ken, I'm here, Don King and Ken over there. I looked at them, Ken, I'm going to destroy you. Bernie, we both can make a lot of money. I said, I'm the only guy going to know about it. Don said, so you just won the fighter and heard his knees knocking. One thing you were quite successful with uh, is what I call LAB, and that's life after boxing. During my career, before, during, and after, I treated people the same. I didn't change. A lot of people came to help me out on different things, they would open the door for me, make a phone call, open the open position for you. So I've been, been really good for me. I, I gotta say, fight game been tremendously uh, great support for me to get involved in. Open a lot of doors for my life. And for my, for, I tell my kids, get every morning and thank God for the fight game we did for us. How does Ernie Shavers want to be remembered as a, as a fighter and, and more importantly, as a man? Well, I just want to remember as a, I was always a clean fighter. I did nothing dirty. And um, I, make you, I made anybody I fought they earn the money that night. And I just want to remember that being a good, good hearted person. I, I, I love helping people. I give, I give back, I give back, I give back. Um, I'm always going to do that. I've always, my whole life. I've always done that. I'm never going to stop now. Well, about the only thing you didn't accomplish in your career was, was winning that coveted prize, the heavyweight championship of the world. You were inches from it at times, but you certainly uh, will always be remembered as a heck of a fighter and one of the great punchers of all time, and nobody can take that away from you. In this corner wants to thank Ernie Shavers for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Such a tremendous punch. No matter what you did, it's going to hurt you. Right hand, speak. Little boom, boom. That's it. I want people to call me champ. I want everyone to respect me. I want to go down in history as the greatest ever. So I'll perfect my technique. I'll throw harder than anyone I face. Every day I'll make my hands faster. I'll increase my endurance. I'll get all of this by being the first to the gym and the last to leave. I'll work endlessly to make sure what I want today is mine tomorrow. Because I'm gearing up for greatness. In This Corner is brought to you by the Las Vegas Dental Group. Have an emergency? Need any dental work when you're in Las Vegas? Visit my friends at the Las Vegas Dental Group. Go to lasvegasdentalgroup.com for more information. Ernie, what did you do best inside this, this ring? Well, I uh, destroyed people. <laughs> I was a tremendous puncher. My guy been here with the ring. I would take him out. I'm of the belief that, yes, a guy can improve his power, but I believe Ernie Shaver's power, uh, George Foreman power, Joe Frazier, is God-given talent. It's just God-given. You're born with it. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think so, too. I grew up on a farm, uh, doing a lot of hound and bag, the wheat and hay and everything. You have my back and leg muscle where the power come from. Your right hand was usually a short right hand. You're right. You're didn't, you're travel, didn't travel a lot of distance. How did you know when you, was it the jab? Again, the punch I call actually yeah. the most important punch in boxing. Yeah. Is that where you got your, your measurements from, the yeah. jab? I live far right behind the jab. So when the jab hit there, ping, boom, right behind it. Just ping, ping, right behind it. You can't, you can't get away with it. Because you're coming, the, right, the jab won't blind you. Pam, pam, right behind it. It, it's just, it's it. In, in terms of your right uppercut, something yeah. that you, you, I, you did pretty good a, against uh, the ropes when you had a guy against the ropes and you'd hit him. Give us a little illustration, not too close of an illustration, <laughs> but an illustration of how, where that right uppercut came from and how you set that up. Okay, the right uppercut is the most dangerous punch in the fight game. It ripped, tear everything up. You can't block it. If you hit where you do, you, you block it here, it's just here, bing. You, you throw that position. You, you jab, bing, bing, up here, up here. You come up here, right up, see? Boom, you know? 
You hide behind the chair. So it's okay to do. If you punch like you punch, and Rocky Marciano used to do this, hit whatever's there. You would hit whatever's there. You wouldn't necessarily pull back on a shot. If the elbow was there, you'd hit the elbow. If the forearm was there, you'd hit the forearm. Wherever I hit, it's forearm, wherever I hit, it's going to hurt. If I punch, I'm going to touch such a tremendous punch. No matter where I hit it, it's going to hurt you. If it's you on, on the arm or in the body and hit whatever, it's going to hurt. So all I had to do is just land. No matter where I land, something's going to get hurt. And you're going to take away, take away, before you know it, you're out of there. Well, one of the things you did, and, and Ali will attest to this, Ali still was trying to move when you faced him. We're going to talk about cutting off the ring. And now I can still, I can do a pretty good uh, Ali movement invitation. So you're going to cut the ring off. Show me how you'd cut the ring off with Ali. I'm a, I'm, I'm a shorter version of Ali. All you got to do here, step over here and step in. Step over here, step in. Always, when you step to, when you step to the guy, step over here. I mean, I'm going to get close to you. Here, strike it away. Oh, I'm getting close to you. Whap. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting you off. See what? We, we don't want any mistakes now. Yeah. See, what you, you, you get the guy, you play do, you step in here, step over here, step over here, step in, boom. You always move, move close to him. You move close. See, when you get in the, rope, in the corner there, bingo. You, you, you step over here, you're stepping in. Step over here, you're stepping in. Go, you're going to cut him off sooner or later, you'll get him. Show me your finishing combination. You've already landed a little right hand. I'm in a little bit of trouble. What do you, how do you finish the guy off? Once I land on my hand, the ball game's over. Well, it was a glancing right. I was, I, you, you caught me with a glancing right. I'm in some trouble. Show me your finishing, uh, your signature finishing okay. combo, the Ernie Shavers finish. Right hand, bing, level, boom, boom. That's it. That's it. Lights out. Ping. That's it. In this corner is brought to you by the Las Vegas Dental Group. Have an emergency? Need any dental work when you're in Las Vegas? Visit my friends at the Las Vegas Dental Group. Go to lasvegasdentalgroup.com for more information. You know, over the years, I've interviewed so many of the great heavyweights from the 70s and early 80s. And whenever the question of who punched the hardest comes up, without fail, one name is always mentioned, Ernie Shavers. He finished his career with a record of 74 wins, 14 losses, and one draw, and an amazing 68 KOs. That's a knockout percentage of over 76%, better than the KO rate of nearly all of the greatest heavyweight champs who ever lived. Also, it's only fair to mention that in his 14 losses, seven times, he was in fact stopped himself. But if they ever come up with a puncher's hall of fame, no doubt Ernie Shavers would be enshrined in his first year of eligibility. Just as all of his opponents have said, damn, that guy could punch. In this corner wants to thank the acorn, the black destroyer, Ernie Shavers for joining us.